Hello and welcome to this video about polydactyly. Um, poly meaning many and dactyly in biology is all about the arrangement of digits so the arrangement of fingers and toes on the body and polydactyly is actually a genetic disorder so it can be inherited and what it will cause to do is it will cause an affected person to have um, more fingers or toes. So they might have an extra finger or an extra toe if they inherit this disorder. Now poly polydactyly is con controlled by a dominant allele. So if you possess that dominant allele, you will have the condition. So it can be passed down if only one parent is affected. So it could be uh, passed to offspring if only one parent is affected. It doesn't need both parents to be sufferers. So if we take an example, to be affected you could, if we use um, P for the allele, so a capital P would be affected, that's dominant, and we we'll use a small p for not affected. If you are an, a, an affected person, you may have the alleles capital P, capital P, or you could have capital P, small p, and be affected. To be not affected, you would need two small recessive alleles. Two lowercase p's or two recessive alleles would mean you are not affected. But if you possess in any way that, that dominant affected allele, at least one of them, you will be affected with this polydactyly condition. So if we show a couple of genetic crosses to show the chances of um, having the genetic disorder if your parent if one of your parents has the disorder themselves we could suggest let's start off by suggesting that there is a male that has the alleles p capitals p and capital p and a female that is unaffected to lowercase p's if we were to cross those in the first scenario we'd have two capitals crossing with two lowercase and you would end up with capital P lowercase p capital P lowercase p capital P lowercase p capital P lowercase p so in this scenario um, every single um, one of your offspring would have the polydactyly condition there'd be a hundred percent polydactyly, a hundred percent affected. Because each of these scenarios, because there's two dominant alleles here, each of these scenarios has a dominant allele in there. However, if we try another scenario where a male, for example, is again the affected one, but this time he has a capital P, a dominant allele, and a recessive allele, and the female again is unaffected with two recessive alleles. If we were to cross those, the male has a dominant and recessive, and the female has two recessives, then you would end up with a situation where you'd have a capital P and a lowercase p, two lowercase p's, a capital P, a lowercase p, and two lowercase p's. So in this situation you would have 50% of your offspring unaffected because they don't have that dominant allele in there and 50% of your offspring affected. So if they have one of each of the alleles, which for higher tier you need to know is heterozygous, they will have a 50% chance of their offspring being affected.
okay? So with a dominant allele, you only need one parent who has the disorder to transfer that to the offspring. If you found this video on polydactyly useful, then please press the like button. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about another condition, which is cystic fibrosis.